What's up guys, welcome back to Apple Tech Talks and I hope you like my new background. Um, it's gonna be my new background from now on. And uh, today we're gonna be looking at Mac OS Sierra. I know it's an old release. I mean, it came out several months ago, but I figured I should do a review because some people are still running OS X El Capitan or even older than that, like Yosemite or Mavericks. And actually, I think it's okay to upgrade, especially for those professionals. I think it's okay to upgrade to Sierra. And I'll tell you why. So here's my video on macOS Sierra. macOS Sierra is Apple's latest release of their desktop operating system software. It's not a huge change if there's no, as there's no like visual overhaul, but there's definitely some subtle features that can change your experience a little bit. So it just makes your experience easier and better. And today I'm going to be giving you a full rundown of every feature, or not every feature, just the major ones uh, in macOS Sierra. So let's take a look at some of these minor, if you will, changes. So the first one is that uh, it come, it's, there's a heavy um, focus on cloud integration. So Apple really wants you to depend more on their iCloud services. They added a feature, for example, to cl help clear up space on your Mac's SSD by uploading older documents and files to the cloud. So understandably, this can frustrate a lot of people but actually, there is a way to turn this off in settings. You can just, uh, you can, when you have the option here, I, I enabled it, but you can actually, you don't have to enable it. You can just, you can just uh, disable it right here. So yeah, there is a toggle in this setting to turn it off, but I find it very useful to uh, know that there's a, per a bunch of purgeable files here, and then there are all these other uh, files that are taking up various amounts of storage in my Mac. So that's cool. Also not related to cloud, there's a new feature called Universal Clipboard and basically it works the same way handoff works in Yosemite. Essentially what you do is you copy something on your iPhone and you paste it on your Mac. So it works just like this. So you get the same uh, text, or it can be images, or it can be uh, video. You can you can copy and paste it if your iPhone is near your Mac or MacBook Pro. So that's cool. The next feature is Auto Unlock. So with Apple Watch, you can actually you can take advantage of the usability of your Apple Watch. So let's say you have a MacBook or a MacBook Pro or an iMac. Basically, what you do is if you get close to your Mac what happens is that it actually unlocks automatically without you having to do anything. And I think that's pretty useful. So you, you can do that instead of typing in the password. And to make sure it's not just any Apple Watch that, walks, that just walks up, um, Mac needs to know it's you though. So not everyone with an Apple Watch can go up and then unlock your Mac. So the next feature is iCloud with desktops. So you can probably see um, over here to the right, I have a lot of folders. Yeah, this is what a YouTuber's desktop looks like. But this is actually from my iMac 5K because this is actually my MacBook Pro desktop. But actually with my iMac 5K right through the display, which I was previously editing on and using it as my daily driver, this uh, all came through when I linked it with iCloud. So this is actually included. So now when you link, so you get a new computer, with iCloud, you not only get your apps and your messages and all the data, but you also get your desktop as well. I think that's a really nicely added feature. And I'll show you what it looks like because I actually haven't set up Apple Pay yet on my on my uh, MacBook Pro. But essentially what it's like is you... Here we go. So basically you can use Apple Pay on the web using Touch ID on your Mac, or if you don't have uh, the newest Mac, Book Pro, um, or you're using an iMac or something like that, you can just use your iPhone to authenticate the purchase. It's really quite simple, and I think it's a really nicely added feature as well, um, because you know with this with this newly, I really like Apple Pay because it's very secure, it's uh, very easy, and best of all, it's just really cool when you see that you can pay with things without having to enter in all this credit card information. So let's bring up photos, maps, because all three of these are modified now to have the same appearance and mostly functionalities as iOS 10. So with photos, you can see that, you know, 
it looks pretty much the same as iOS 10. You have the memories feature, which you also have in iOS 10. Activity, and then all these other albums. It's a really, I really like this new UI. I think it's really, really nice. Um, and it'll only get better with time. Um, so yeah, this is photos. Then we have messages over here, <clears throat> which, essentially, which essentially you can do the same thing with, um, with all the emojis. You can also, um, you can also send full screen effects. You can receive full screen effects and animations and things like that. You can send message animations, whatever you want. You can do all that stuff on messages as well. And then with maps, um, I think I like this because, because um, I mean, yeah, it, it was updated a little bit to look more like iOS 10. But the, my favorite feature is that you can actually add tabs. And this also works with pages. You can have multiple tabs. I think it's an unlimited amount of tabs um, open on your Mac. I think that's pretty cool instead of having to have multiple windows. And then all, iTunes also is updated to show iOS and iOS 10 sort of features. Well, so we have the unwatched, we have the library, everything like that. It's really nice. Okay, before I mention some other changes, I want to acknowledge Apple's work on some on changing even the subtlest details, from the font size so when you type in a password to multiple tabs and applications, like I just mentioned, and ma maps and pages, to the redesigned notification center, which is really nice too. Furthermore, on YouTube videos, you can actually enter picture in picture. So I start playing this YouTube video here right now. I'm news now. Go watch if you haven't already. I'm gonna thumbs up this video too. Um, you can actually create a pip, which means that you can actually right click on the video twice. Run two. Sorry. Yeah. There we go. And you can enter full screen. Or if you click this enter picture in picture thing, look what you get. You get this nice pip, and you can drag it around. You can resize the window. Go to something else, maybe another app or another window and then just drag this around to get out of the way of your work. Or if you just want to listen to the audio, you just pull it off to the side like that. You just click it, it returns. Once you're done, or if you want to pause like that, if you want to turn back to like the picture in picture like that, and uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, this goes along really nicely with split screen, which I introduced last year in OS X El Capitan. And essentially what this uh, does is improve the multitasking capabilities. All right, the final change, or the final major change on macOS Sierra is Siri. So as you can see down here, I have this new application called Siri, and if I press it, <laughs> all right. So basically, uh, you can access Siri by clicking this icon at any time. You don't have to have it, you can remove it from your dock, and then you can actually just take it from your menu bar. Um, I cropped it out, but basically the menu bar is up here, you know where it is. Um, and you can actually use the touch bar if you have your new MacBook Pro, to access Siri as well. So Siri can do everything your iPhone can. So it can answer questions, search the web, look at nearby restaurants and movies, uh, locate files, open applications, and do so much more on your Mac. It's not really anything cool, like anything new, but uh, it's, you know, it's nice to have it on your Mac. I think that's a nicely added touch. I just wish Apple had gone a little bit with the extra mile here in order to uh, add extra Siri functionality, but you know, We'll just have to wait for like iOS 11 or something like that for the Siri improvements to come. So those are the major new features. And I know what you're thinking. What about stability? Because nobody wants software with this, which has, which has like all these shiny features, but they don't want bugs. So let me tell you how the stability and the performance is. So working on the iMac 2012 or newer, it's buttery smooth. It's even faster in some areas, such as browsing the web and opening applications. I don't have every iMac for comparison, unfortunately, but I have an iMac 2010 and running Sierra in it has been mediocre. Not only does it freeze a lot when doing heavier than light tasks, such as watching videos and opening multiple tabs, but it also takes forever to restart or shut down this Mac. And it just crashes a lot overall. So I would not recommend updating if you have it, uh, if you have an iMac from, I'd say 2010 or older. So I would keep that on like Yosemite actually because El Capitan also didn't work too well on it. It's also recommended to back up your Mac before updating. If you want, I'll make a video on how to back up your Mac, although I think it's pretty self-explanatory for most people. Um, if you want to see any tutorials on anything in Mac OS Sierra or even iOS, leave a thumbs up and comment below with what you want me to give a tutorial on. So that about wraps it up. Mac OS Sierra in a nutshell is a somewhat minor improvement to the already well-established Mac ecosystem it's a very conservative update, but uh, you know, it's nothing that I wouldn't say 
is uh, harmful to your computer. It's only going to make your Mac experience better. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. That about wraps it up. Um, you know, there are new features too, like application tabs and further iCloud integration. So I recommend updating, like I said, if you have the iMac 2012 or newer computer, definitely update. It's a great release. Even for professionals, um, it works great. If you don't want to upgrade because you don't want Final Cut uh, uh, 10, that I, I okay, I understand that. But if for most people, to upgrade to macOS here. Like, come on, it's a good, it's a good release. So with that, thank you so much for watching. And if you want me to see, if you want to see more videos and tutorials, make sure to click that like button. I have some great videos coming up in the next few weeks, so stay tuned. And as always, I will see you in the next video.